Hey everyone, my name is Arielle with The Foraging Family. We love producing videos on farming, foraging, and faith in our creator. We are a family that lives on a 12 acre homestead in the beautiful mountains of Alabama. And we are documenter... <laughs> We are documenting our journey to country living. Um, so we right now are doing something so exciting. We are planning out our 2024 garden. So we have a goal of trying to feed our family solely on the food we grow. Not completely, but just trying to get there. So my husband, who's the experienced farmer and horticulturalist, um, we are really trying to uh, start our garden. Um, we'll continue our garden. <laughs> if you've been on this journey with us, thanks so much for joining us again. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We are not experts, but we love sharing and encouraging you all who might be wanting to move to an agrarian lifestyle or um, learn more gardening tips alongside with us. So my husband is organizing our seeds, so let's get into this video. You ready, babe? Ready. Let's go. So we have our Ziploc bags, our permanent markers, and we ran out of rubber bands. So we're actually going to use my daughter's um, hair ties, um, but we use whatever works. We're going to go ahead and organize these and we're going to go outside and really start jotting down where we want things and kind of do first things first. a quick tip um we wouldn't put uh, the direct seeds in these plastic contain um, plastic bags because of um, mold and mildew that can occur but because they are in these bags already um, we are going to put them here these are going to be stored in a dark cool place um, we actually use these uh plastic these uh what are these what is this foam foam bins to place all of our seeds in um, and then it, they have tops on them and my husband put a W here for winter um, so these are all of our winter stuff that we're placing here when we save our own seeds we put them in these little envelopes here we got these on Amazon for I think it was like five dollars and it came with over 50 of these little bags and that's what we use to save our own seeds um, especially from our tomatoes and our squashes and our cucumber. We saved our own seeds in that. So, yes, having um, paper um, or envelopes is really a great way to save your seeds. And then we're placing them in here so that they don't get wet um, just in case because of this foam thing. But, yeah, that's an option. So once we finish um, categorizing our seeds, um, uh, we are going to head outside and really uh, kind of put a visual to where we're going to plant everything. Um, we did a lot of work outside, but there's still a lot of things that we need to just start planning out. Um, so we're going to take you with us with that. Uh, we are located in zone 7B. So our last frost date is to be safe April 1st. So, um, yeah, we really aren't going to start seeding until next month. Um, right now it's February, late February. So, um, but yeah, this is the planning stages. We have a lot of work to do, a lot of prep. So we're going to take you along and show you how we're going to do all of that stuff. All right, let's go. So here it stays pretty warm, but we do have to get a new canvas 
and possibly another uh, hard shell greenhouse um because yeah this thing got kind of beaten up by storms so we definitely that's one of the things on our list to do is to re-canvas our greenhouse and we're also going to purchase a hard shell greenhouse so stay tuned for what we buy and how we're going to build it but yeah so that is number one on our list on our plan for this garden another thing that we have to do here on the farm is to protect what we're going to start growing uh, we have a host of animals and pests that will get to our food uh, all that hard work we got to protect so so we have this fencing here uh, that we've had for a while and so my idea is to use this tree as a post connect it to that standing post there and then we'll work on getting a swinging uh, gate uh, hmm. for between those two posts but this is the main area we have to this is the only area that is not currently um, fenced, fenced yeah in. and it seems like they'll get like especially the deer they can just easily walk into our garden area which is they come from over here they come from over there and then they get into our garden area here so if we can it looks like there was a fence here at one some point in time long ago so we're just gonna go ahead and use that to cover our bases so Irrigation. Irrigation, yeah, water. What are we gonna do about that? Yeah, uh, one, we're gonna consider drought resistant plants, planting those here. Picking which ones will do well with minimal irrigation effort. Mm. Just for this year. Okay, and then talk about these right here. So these are our water towers. Well, not towers, but they store water for us. Um, and my idea is that because this, this land slopes actually towards the rear of the orchard, we could use gravity to potentially feed the uh, a drip irrigation system. There is a spider that just, okay. <laughs> just like flew in the air, oh my gosh. Par for the course. Oh, they're, they're kiting or something like that. That's what it is because I'm seeing all these silks around. I'm not for this, uh-uh. Yeah, that's how they spread. That's disgusting. They fly. Ugh. Okay, keep going. All right, just when you thought it was safe to come outside. <laughs> All right, so uh, the idea is that we, we put the tower here, raise it on uh, some stilts or on the platform here, and then allow gravity to feed a drip irrigation system that runs the length of our earth bed rows. Ah. Because it slopes down that way. Right. Potentially we could get enough pressure to water water uh water this area. So since we have three tanks, you're thinking one on each row? Right. <clears throat> Got it. Interesting. Now the the big thing is collecting water. For example, if we had a hard shell greenhouse, that's a lot of surface area that we could potentially uh, utilize in order to harvest rainwater and feed these three. Right in there, yeah. Along this line. But um, since we don't, it'd mostly be pumping well water into these and allowing it to flow. Why don't we want to pump, uh, just pump the well water directly? It's because it's all the way over there. <laughs> and it's a little, it's a little labor intensive. Right. expensive to uh it's probably about 400 500 feet oh yikes okay and we'd have to pipe it <clears throat> yeah. so those are our ideas uh if you have any suggestions let us know we're always open yes we are because we need the help <laughs> um about 80 percent of what we're going to be growing is going to be transplants um, and then other things are going to be direct sow. So direct sow means we're going right into the earth bed rows and direct sowing, most likely corn, um, is what one of the things that we direct sow and sweet potatoes. But a lot of the other stuff we're going to transplant, like our zucchini and tomatoes. Potatoes are going to be direct sow. Uh, 
sweet potatoes, we're gonna put the slips. Oh, okay, gotcha. Alrighty. Let's see, he knows everything. <laughs> All right, so he here is mixing. You're mixing the compost? Yeah. Right now, this is a really good moisture level. You want 40 to 60% moisture. As moist as maybe a sponge, a wrung out sponge for your compost. Mm. Right. Um, second thing you want is to turn over regularly so you can get uh, aerobic action happening. So aerobic action means that your bacteria, those specific bacteria are using oxygen in order to help break down the product. This is versus anaerobic, well the compost, versus anaerobic decomposition, which some bacteria uh break down the product or the, this compost without oxygen you want aerobic and so with aerobic decomposition you're gonna get a lot of heat generated mm. and so that's what i'm seeing because i'm seeing some steam and some uh some some composters will measure the temperature of their compost and maintain it at a certain temperature if the temperature starts dipping below or low, they'll know it's time to turn it over um, because it's not getting enough oxygen. Mm. And so there's a science to it. You want to layer your carbon rich material with your nitrogen rich material. Carbon rich being uh, dry material like this, right? Rich in uh, carbon. And your nitrogen rich material would be your, your vegetables, straps. your kitchen straps, uh, your chicken manure. And you layer it, right? Right. So this is the, this bin, we add all our fresh compost and we turn it over and leave it to break down over months. And as it breaks down, we transfer We transfer the broken down material into our next stage bin to further break down. Right. And so you can see the difference that has lots of uh, whole organic pieces. This one, we just covered it with some hay to protect it, but it has a finer consistency. A lot of the material is broken down. You can see the rich, dark soil beginning to form. And so we're going to leave this to break down further and then transfer it to our final bin. We don't have much here. Yeah, that's not quite it. That's just the bottom where that'll be our final product, where it'll break down finally into that fine, crumbly, dark material that you want for your garden. Homemade miracle Grow soil right here. So here's what we're gonna do. This is the earliest one. You gotta be very careful not to spill them, okay? Here, let's start at this end. Every two inches. So you okay. see those sticks that you have? 
try to space them out because that is exactly two inches. All right. And in front of the this line here of the bed, we're going to be planting uh, lettuce. And they're great companion plants. Um, <clears throat> we're also going to be planting peas that will crawl up this uh, trellis, but it will also feed nitrogen into our soil. Mm -hmm. All right, no need to cover. We're going to just pinch everything closed in the end. I'm gonna leave you a section. No, only in the channel. Only in the channel. Here, Jen, a plant right here. We're about to see these Alaska wilt resistant peas. We're gonna put one pea per hole about six inches apart. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're gonna put it right here by this right. trellis. Go ahead. This looks good. Keep going. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, two per? Yeah, one per, one per hole. Let's space it out. And keep going. Ooh, these peas are big. If I see... So here we did carrots, lettuce in between, and then our Alaska peas that are going to go up this trellis here. Then we have some strawberries at the end over there. Now over here, we're going to put our snap peas against the trellis, more carrots and lettuce in between. Feel free to do every two inches. Okay. All right, kiddos, we got some more peas here. Let's go. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Yummy. Tastes like it has lots of protein. <laughs> protein. <laughs> All right. All right, let's go plant these peas. Remember, it's going to be three inches apart, so stretch your finger out, okay? Okay. Oh, dear. So, we put three seeds in the same Oh, I no. thought you said three seeds. One seed, three inches apart. Uh, uh, I have to walk on the road. I can't go all the way down. You know, while we're out here gardening, um, the Lord brought a um, thought to my mind that I want to share with you. If you read the story of Martha and Mary in Luke 10, verse 38 through 42, you see how Martha is really busy trying to cook and clean um, for her guests that are coming to her home. And one of those guests is Jesus. Mary takes a seat at Jesus' feet while Martha is busy doing so many things, things that are necessary. But um, when she goes to Jesus and says, Jesus, don't you care that my sister's not helping me? He tells her that what Mary is doing is the best thing. What Mary is doing is um, showing a devotional spirit to the Savior. And that really struck a chord with me because as we're planning our 2024 garden, as we're seeking to grow our own food, and that takes a lot of work, we get so focused on making our pantries look amazing with all these canned foods and having so much food um, to provide for our family for a year. All of that is great, but if we don't have a devotional spirit, if we don't have a deeper anxiety for the things that are eternal, then all of this homesteading stuff is in vain because honestly the stuff is temporal and it's going to go away it's not forever but what is forever and what is lasting is our deep relationship with our lord and savior so i just want you to remember that as you're planning um <laughs> don't be anxious have a spirit that is devoted to learning more about the lord It's been a long day. End of the day, we're ready to head back inside the house. Uh, we did a lot of work today. We did a lot of planning. We're off to a good start and um, we're just hoping for the best. So yeah, that's our 2024 garden plan. We're really not YouTubers that are pumping out things all the time. Uh, our family is our first ministry. So if you see it, it might be 
um, every two weeks. It might be once a month. Um, so we just hope that the videos that we are pumping out are encouraging to you. And uh, yeah. All right, guys, we are, we're heading inside for the rest of the day. All right, we're done. Family that grows together stays together. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Ooh, ooh. The family that grows together grows together. Okay. You done? Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>